Do you have any problems with the research and people concerned about identity theft with, with DNA? Is that an issue? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it should, everybody should be concerned about that. I mean, right now when we get up, I, when you get up out of your chair, you're going to leave some hair and some cells, f skin cells, and I could get DNA from that. You watch CSI. <laughs> I mean, it's simple now. The technology is there. So, so we have to be aware of that. And so to, um, to provide access of, to, of your biological material to some group, company or, or agency or whatever, you have to be aware. And that's why for, with African Ancestry, we actually have a, a legal contract. It's called Terms and Conditions. So if you participate in this, it's like a, it's a legal document saying that we will not share any of your genetic information to any third party, any personal information. I think that's very, very important. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why it, it, this took a while for us to really get this service, provide this service, because I had to find people t who I'm working with now who shared the same sort of ethics and, and, and um, sensitivities to the community. Because I, just like everybody else, I mean, every other African American, I'm concerned about issues like Tuskegee. I don't want somebody knocking on my door saying, here, participate in this, and then I get no rights. I have no rights once I provide those, uh, those specimens. You're working with children, and also there's a, there was an article about working with AIDS in Africa. Is there any way that this links to finding some solutions to this global problem? Well, I, th I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think our understanding of genetics and genetic ancestry is going to help provide useful information as it relates to health and disease. Because you got to understand, so each community, there's a, there's a uh, history of the population in the community. And there's a history of disease in the community. And sometimes the, the population and gene history correlates with disease history. And so I think we need to understand that and measure those, those parameters so that we could um, possibly be able to come up with um, um, uh, better uh, treatment and understanding of, of disease. You've done quite a bit in your lifetime uh, in tracing genetic ancestry, and I know it's going to change in the future. Where do you see it going over the next five years? Well, I, I see, um, uh, since, as I mentioned earlier, since the technology is, is expanding quickly, we're going to have a lot more markers that we're going to look at, a lot more of these genetic markers, these, these DNA uh, pieces of DNA that we're going to look at and databases are going to get bigger and so the reliability of these results is going to increase. I mean the, 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 um, the uh, error is going to decrease and uh, we'll also be able to be a bit more specific in terms of some of these matches. Uh, right now for some of these it's a very broad area that, that we find matches in but ultimately I think it's going to be a lot more specific. What other irons do you have in the fire? What other projects do you have going that you might want to talk well, about. Well, right, right now I'm very interested in trying to understand health in, of African Americans, in particular health disparities. Mm -hmm. And so we think about cardiovascular disease, we think about prostate cancer, breast cancer, and asthma. Those are some serious um, uh, health issues that as a community we have to resolve if we're going to really face the next uh, generation um, uh, appropriately. And I think that, uh, that there's, some, there's some interesting sort of genetic questions that we're starting to look at. And we're going to compare certain profiles in different communities across the U.S. that have a high incidence of these diseases. What are those genetic questions? Well, have it, you gotten well, to well, that well, point well, yet? Well, well for instance, yeah. we know that some of these diseases run in families. And so there might be a genetic component. But it's not, that's not the only answer. I mean, that's not the only culprit. These, these diseases are what we call common disease, complex diseases, common complex diseases. And they're complex because it's not just genes, but it's the environment too. When we say environment, we're talking diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So why is it that some people can smoke two packs of cigarettes and not get lung cancer, mm -hmm. while somebody who gets secondhand smoke develops lung cancer? And so there's some genes that we have that are different, that are involved in that interaction with the smoke that increase one or de decrease one decreases one's risk. So it's the same thing with, with, with uh, diabetes and, and, and hypertension and um, um, uh, you know, cardiovascular di disease and, and some cancers, that there are certain behaviors, diets uh, and, and uh, lack of exercise that are increasing risk mm -hmm. on top of the fact that there are some genes that are running in families. 
We've talked about your work. What is it that makes Dr. Rick, and I saw one place, Ricky Kittles <laughs> tick? <laughs> what, what makes you tick? I don't, I, I'm just one of those, one of those people that, that just loves to learn, and, and, and I'm still learning. I mean, I, when I go out and interact with people, I want to know as much about their community as possible so that I can help uh, uh, shape my understanding of, 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 of us as a, as, a, as, a, as a people. I mean, one of the things that I've learned is that I appreciate diversity, and I appreciate the fact that we are not all, all the same. Uh, and, so, and so what makes me tick is, is, is learning new things, I guess. <laughs> For someone who may be watching and they've been saying, you know, I really, really have wanted to find out mm -hmm. who my people are, no matter what race they are, uh, what advice would you give them mm -hmm. to just start? To start, you know, you, start? you can go online and um, if you're an African-American, you can look up African-American genetic uh, testing or genealogical um, uh, research. Uh, and, um, and, and, and you'll get a, a, a plethora of information. And uh, just do your research. I mean, that's, that's the best thing. I mean, there are so many starting points, uh, but it, I think it's best to just go through this process, do research, do your diligence, and then decide. Did, what influenced you to do this? I mean, we can think about roots years ago. <laughs> right, right. Did that spark an interest in trying to find out? It, it, it had a major yeah. uh, impact in terms of why I'm doing what, what, I, what I do. I mean, Roots was a, had a major effect on, 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 the, on the country, uh, if not the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up in Long Island, and the, the, the community that I grew up in was interesting. It was about 30 percent black, 30 percent white, 30 percent Hispanic or so. And so there was, um, I saw a lot of diversity, but in my classes, mm -hmm. I was the only black student in the class. It was all whites. And so I would hear stories about them going to Europe for vacation, going to Italy, going to Ireland. Their grandparents would come from Poland or whatever. And the only thing I would say was I'm going to Georgia. You know, that's where my family is. And, and it was something that just stuck with me from, from early childhood, wanting to know more and um, uh, trying to get as much information as possible to help me know more. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, uh, that's 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 one of the things that have been that was driving me. And then also, you know, the, you have sort of some of these um, um, situations in your life where you where you say, oh wow, I have to learn more about this. And so one of them was was Roots. Mm -hmm. Another one was the movie Mandingo. I mean, uh, when Ken Norton was, a, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I was like, wow. I mean, so there were there were experiences in 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 some parts of the South that, uh, that were quite different and, 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 and had long-term ramifications as it relates to the African-American experience. And I wanted to, to learn more, so I would read more. And then, you know, once you start opening your mind up to that, you just, it just keeps going. And you've been doing this for how long now? Ah, over 10, 15, yeah. about, yeah, over 15 years, yeah. Anything, any change in direction that you're thinking about doing? I, th I think I'm going to focus, start focusing more on this, on the health issues mm -hmm. uh, as it relates to ancestry. Um, uh, I think that um, I would, I would, I don't think I would do the community any justice not to explore that issue. And hopefully that will change the mindset, particularly for black men mm -hmm. who um, don't always like to go to the doctor or oh, yeah, like yeah. to see about right, themselves. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, so, so there are many facets in terms of what's playing a role in terms of our health. I mean, the, the psychosocial issue of not wanting to even go to the doctor or not having trust in the, yeah. in the, in the physician. Sure. I mean, those are, those are serious issues. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. You've you're been welcome. a pleasure to talk with, and I wish you all the best in your future work because you're helping all of us. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. So this is important work, and I want to thank you, and I want to thank you for join, joining us. For WOUB, I'm Carolyn Bailey-Lewis.